welcome to the Masters University uh, virtual Q&A. My name is Vanessa Haynes. I am the admissions event manager here at TMU. For the month of October, we're doing a variety of Q&As with our professors. Um, this is an opportunity for you, our prospective student, to receive more information, get some questions answered, learn about a department, and hear the answers to frequently asked questions. Just a few logistical items before we begin. Note that your camera and your microphone are turned off. Um, please do make use of that chat button. Um, anything that you want to know, any questions you may have, we'd love to hear from you and we'll try to get to those towards the end of the session. Um, if you do accidentally get logged off, please go ahead and use that link in your original confirmation email to get back in. Um, and let me introduce our guests. We have with us Dr. Mitch Hopewell, Provost and Dean of Online Learning. Um, he'll be conducting the Q&A with Professor Ben Mason, Director of Instrumental Studies, Music Composition and Audio Production. Welcome to Dr. Hopewell and Professor Mason. Thanks, Vanessa, I really appreciate it. Um, welcome to you, uh, uh, Prof. Mason. Uh, we're just happy to, to have you here and to join us for one of another installment of these opportunities that I get to uh, hang out and interview uh, the interesting people we have here on our faculty. So always enjoy my time uh, with you and especially when I can uh, take you to the rest of the world. So um, why don't we start here? Uh, ben, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and how, you, how the Lord brought you to the Master's University? Well, growing up, I moved all over. Uh, my father was in the military, and so we, we lived many different places. Um, but, um, and I went to, you know, I went to the, you know, conservatory and did different things. But about 11 years ago, I came out to do a film scoring program at USC. And um, I did that, and I was intending to, you know, maybe stay for here in LA for a year and then move. But, you know, the Lord ended up keeping me here and I was actually brought me to master's. I was teaching a class on finale um, music notation software and a few professors from master's were taking the class and one thing led to another and, you know, ended up teaching here and have loved it. Okay. So um, you are a composer, a musician. Um, can you give us, most people around here tend to be a pretty shy and don't want to talk too much about their accomplishments, but one of my uh, privileges is to work with some really smart and accomplished people. Give us a couple highlights, Ben, of things that you've, uh, that you've done and, and um, some works that you produce. Um, I've, as a composer, um, I've, you know, I've, I've scored, you know, commercials for, for companies like Intel um, HP, different game companies. Um, I've done as a violinist, I've, you know, played sessions, you know, been fortunate to be on sessions and shows with, you know, with some prominent artists and, um, and then um, arranging, I've arranged for different artists to get to conduct. So it's kind of a wide variety of um, things I get to do, but love it and feel um, blessed to be able to be part of the creative industry here in LA. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I don't think people uh, even here, uh, know some of the full extent of that. So, um, well, uh, let's talk a little bit about some of that professional experience. Um, and I know that you have some exciting um, tech. You're sitting in a, a pretty exciting space uh, here at the university. I see students behind you. I think the camera is kind of pinching everybody in, but we are trying to follow all our distancing guidelines there. And you can't see their faces, but we have even these special singing masks that I've seen Correct, yeah. singing in. So I'm um, really trying to, to stay safe there. But tell us about some of the um, some of the exciting stuff that you've got going on in there in that room with you and 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 what uh, what's going on in the music department. Um, well, I'm in the recording studio here. As you can see, we have a console back here. Um, this is a the design um, by Avid. Um, mixing console and we do our recording and mixing from here and then we have um, two rooms here a large room and we can split it into two individual rooms 
Uh, we're in the process right now of um, converting this room into more of analog. Um, so students can really get um, a full sense of learning on analog gear. And then also we have an amazing adjunct professor named Scott Weber, who's won Emmy awards and is a, you know, A-list mixer. And we're, and he teaches post-production mixing. And so we're going to use this since this is more of a post-production uh, mixing board and he's going to teach, you know, things by like 5.1, 7.1 and Dolby Atmos. That's where you have speakers that surround you and this sound can come from different directions. So we have a lot of exciting things going on. And, and even right here, we have the crowd and they look a lot closer than they are, but they, they are distanced and they have these, um, they're using them on Broadway. They're called the Broadway singer's mask. Uh, but where we have full ensembles right now, we have the chorale, we have the orchestra that's in here, and we do you know recordings with both groups and and and, and various. That's so programs. that's so cool. I, every time I go over there, it's like you know amazing. So you said you're going to install a, a, an analog room, and everybody seems to be thinking this is totally ignorant on my part. But everybody's moving to digital. So what's why? What's the advantage of having the analog? Uh, most we we try to stay current here um, with what the with what the recording studios are. And one thing we have found is though people are going to smaller hybrid, the bigger studios are still using analog. Um, and analog, we think, just has a warmer um, um, sound. And we want students, you know, we want students to come out of here being diversified, well-rounded. Um, and so we're doing that more just also just serve the students and give them tools to be able to. Um, to be versatile because I think that's for for us that's the name of the game is having wearing many hats and being able to do many not many, uh, do many jobs rather than just focusing on one specific area in audio okay okay yeah I know you've shared with me some of the options that um, that's that uh, Prof Weber brings uh, to the table with students that are actually they go he has a studio if I'm, is that correct he has a studio that he takes students to that's correct. Um, he, he works out of a studio in Burbank and we bring the studio, uh, the students to the studio. We also bring them along when I do sessions, whether it's Capitol, um, we're gonna be, you know, be bringing the chorale, for example, to one of the recording studios, hopefully in the spring, depending on COVID, but they're gonna sing along on a commercial project. Um, and so we try to incorporate, you know, the students to the studios on both production, post-production, but also recording as much as possible. And we're also, we're really lucky that a lot of our um, professors here are um, in the recording industry. And so they are, they've been very generous and give our students chances to observe real world. Um, I think we lost some audio on you there. The guy in the audio room, he's got some audio problems. <laughs> we'll get that spun up. Oh, we found the problem. For those that are uh, logging on, I see a few guests in the room. Uh, if you have any questions along the way that you wanna ask, feel free to put those in the chat room and um, we'll see those and, and uh, maybe we, Ben and I can uh, extend our conversation about that. So, are you back? Can you hear me? I can hear you. You're back. Fantastic. So Excellent. sorry about that. Little troubleshooting right in the middle. No problem. So we were just talking about students that get the opportunity to go into actual industry recording sessions and, um, you know, uh, Prof Weber with some musical scores and for some big movies and commercial projects you were talking about. What about some of the students in uh, some of the performance students, instrumental singing? Uh, talk to, what are some of the projects that we've done with them? We've done, well, for example, with the Corral, um, they, they most recently, um, they were on Matt Redman's recording um, yeah. as the backup Corral. We've, you know, we've taken students to the Getty Sing Conference where they were part of the TBS um, Christmas special and they did backup for the Gettys um, also during one of their worship services. Um, again, they've sung on projects uh, too. If you've been to Forest Lawn and uh, Hall of Crucifix and Resurrection, they have a, um, performance or uh, audio narration along with music that's the master's university hmm. that recorded that so we the students get lots of opportunities to perform but also lots of opportunities just to observe we take even them to the studios um, to to see how the professionals work we take them to the la phil to the la opera um, um, and so we really try to encourage them to take advantage of the just the op opportunities that are here 
in Los yeah, Angeles. I think one of the great things when I look at um, typical music departments is they tend to be, they tend often at smaller schools to be a little more narrow. And our students have a broad range all the way from the recording audio tech side into the scoring and the composition side with some of your students, Ben, and then all the way into the performance side and not just performances for, you know, uh, a small campus event, but really performances for some some pretty major things. So um, talk to me a little bit about uh, some of the exciting things your, your students are doing in terms of uh, jobs that they're either doing while they're in uh, school or whether it's uh, right after. Can you share some of those with us? Well, while the students are in school, um, just speaking of audio tech first, um, for example, they, it, one of the advantages of being at a smaller school is you get experience. And, and for audio tech students, they get experience from recording small groups to, you know, a couple of times a semester, you get to record a 70 plus piece orchestra, you get to record a chorale, at, you know, 120, 100, 120 voice choir. So you get a lot of experience here. And there are other opportunities like, you know, doing chapel live sound for a band. Um, and that has led the students to land some pretty amazing jobs and just in audio tech. For example, we have nearly 100% job placement um, mm -hmm. for the students that have graduated. And that's a large part to this, um, you know, students working hard and taking advantage of the opportunities here, but also with the opportunities that are coming out ahead of the game because they have the experience that a lot of students then have to get once they graduate um, their respective schools. Okay. Walk me around. We talked a little bit about facilities. Walk me around the facilities that you guys have over in the in the music department, because there's some exciting things. Well, we have a, a computer lab here, which we keep up to date with, you know, with the most current software. Um, most people usually ask that are inter interested, for example, in audio tech, you know, what um, software do you have? We teach Logic. We use um, we, we teach Pro Tools. We're an AVID certified um, um, school. And so that means we are an AVID learning partner and you can take the AVID test. Um, and, and, get, and get a certification in Pro Tools, which employers uh, like to see. It shows you have a, a competency in Pro Tools. Uh, we have the recital hall here. This could be either one full hall or split. And in the recital hall, we have a two manual pipe organ actually um, that was um, built by uh, Manuel Rosales, the uh, person who built the Walt Disney Concert Hall organ. Um, we have harpsichords here, and then, you know, we have um, different, we have practice rooms, so, and then I'm in the recording studio here, so we're blessed to have a lot of different facilities that, um, you know, that are used in, you know, multi-purpose ways, but it's, it's great to see them being used. How many, how many individual practice rooms? I know I've walked through and seen a, a bunch of students there in there doing their, uh, you know, it's kind of like a sound you know, sound quiet room or whatever, sound sealed room, and they're doing their practicing. How many of those are, are available? Don't quote me on this, but I believe there's 16. Okay, okay. I believe yeah, that's I there's quite a few. Yeah. Um, talk to me about some of the tours that, uh, that the groups do, some of the opportunities the students have, uh, particularly in the summer, to, uh, to travel and perform. Um, the big tour right um, right now is the corral. Uh, every other um, once you know every other year they're either are in state or the other year they'll go overseas. So this past summer they didn't go because of COVID, uh, but, but they usually take about a two week trip and they go through a portion of the United States and they sing at different churches uh, and it's a, it's a really rich time. It's great to see you know the students build friendships um, and. One of the things I love about it is it brings together different parts of the campus. It's just not music majors that are in these groups. For example, this year, I think it's 40, uh, 40 something percent of students um, that are in the corral are non-music majors. Hmm. Uh, and that's about the same for the orchestra. Hmm. Okay. Wow, that's, that's great. But the orchestra as well, we take we take little trips and we go to different places and perform. And it's just it's really these opportunities outside not only are musically fun, but it's um, it's really uh, enjoyable for me to see just um, friendships um, form and, you know, yeah. and the students stay in touch, you know. You know where, where, where are some of the international places that the choir goes? They've been to um, um, Israel, um, England, um, Europe, I mean, you know, different lots of different places okay yeah it's great and i believe israel is on there is the on their docket for the next overseas trip 
if I remember correctly. I think I remember that too, yeah. Tell me a little bit about what, um, you know, you guys have a, a special, um, maybe a unique um, music department. What? Tell me about your philosophy, how you approach uh, the major of music. What is, how is, what is the philosophy and how might that be different from some other places? Well, we first, we look at music as worship and, you know, as the model, we say God, family, craft. Um, we put God first. He's, you know, he's the creator and he's given us music. And we, we first look at all um, giving it back to him and who are, and we're not, you know, performing for us to be glorified, but for him to be glorified. And we try to do that in all of what we do. Uh, we, and we believe character, it comes first before craft. Hmm. You can have a great craft, but, but if the character and relationship with God isn't there, that's what we care more about. Um, and hmm. so that's where we put our emphasis um, and then craft second. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, tell me about some of the other faculty in the department. Um, we, have, um, we have Sarah Dixon who um, teaches voice studies. Uh, we have Lauren Mason who does um, piano pedagogy um, and piano. Special um, to your heart. Yes, um, my wife, yes. <laughs> um, we have Ruta Bloomfield who teaches music, um, sorry, um, or, um, oral skills, ear training, and music history, and, um, and is a, Baroque, a music and Baroque, uh, or expert in Baroque music. Um, and then we have um, professors like Mike, Mike Farrell, who's an amazing violinist, Professor Gary Quo, who's won multiple Emmys. Uh, we have Scott Weber. Um, and just, we, you know, we're, we're blessed with, a, with quite a, you know, large faculty with yeah. different skills. Yeah, that's great. And Ruta's got that great, uh, what is it? Is it, it's not a harpsichord. It's a version of a harpsichord. Is it, it is a harpsichord. Okay, it is. Dominates her entire office. That's that's all she, you know, yeah. I always tell her before I, before you talk to me, I need you to play something for me on that. She always loves to play. So she that's does. great. Well, I think that, I think the important thing for me when I, you know, reflect on our music faculty here uh, is uh, kind of what you mentioned, Ben, you know, the, the, the care and concern uh, for the individual students that, that, that you guys uh, employ, that you express and, um, you know, that's certainly one of the, yeah, anybody who's listening is going to see the credentials, hear the credentials, Emmy award winning, you know, professional uh, musicians, recording artists. Um, but, um, but beyond that, um, just the care and, and, and at, on the personal level. And there are, there are many students uh, at art schools or music conservatories or whatever who don't get that benefit uh, from, their, from their faculty. Not only would there not be a Christian worldview or a biblical worldview, um, but even just the personal um, interaction with them, uh, unless they, maybe they pick their top, top, top student that they'll invest a little bit of their own time in. Uh, and, and, and faculty in our music department are investing all up and down uh, the, the list of students that they have, so. And that's what uh, we love about teaching here is it's just not, you just don't show up for a lesson and, and, and then you're, you, you go, we, you see us, you know, every day um, uh, and it's, and, and we, you know, we enjoy getting to know you um, and, and helping you grow, um, not just yeah. musically, but spiritually. And it's, it's, it's fun for us and we yeah. love the interaction, personal part. Absolutely. Well, you know, I do see a few people online. I'm just wondering if anybody has any questions about um, potential, you know, music majors uh, at the university. Maybe um, while they're thinking about that and writing something down, Ben, do you, could you give us a list of some of the options that students might have academically uh, if they were to uh, be a student in the music department? Sure. Uh, we have a Bachelor of Music and Music Performance and that can be piano, piano and pe piano pedagogy, composition, or instrumental performance. We also have a Bachelor of Arts um, in music. We have a Bachelor of Arts in, in audio um, technology and communications. And we have some other hybrid degrees where you can do um, audio tech and another degree. Um, and, we have, and we have a worship, we have a worship degree, um, a traditional and modern worship degree. Okay. So there's a lot of different options, um, for, you know, for both, you know, where you feel your skill set and your calling is. Yeah. 
Um, for the, the earlier, you mentioned some of the camaraderie in the, in the students. How big are the, give us a sense of how big the orchestra is, how big the choir is. The chorale is, um, this year is at 50 members. Um, the orchestra is at 50 right now. Um, we usually have two different orchestras. We have um, more of a chamber orchestra, though we've been doing, we've done some huge works. Um, you know, like last year we did Beethoven Seven. we've done Pines of Rome, um, and, you know, and some John Williams, like E.T., Indiana Jones, so things like that. Um, and that group, when we perform, is about 85 um, musicians, but we have also have a university orchestra, which is at 85, and then we have a university um, choir, we call it University Singers, and that's anywhere between about 90 and 120, depending on the season. We have a jazz band uh, that's about um, 10 to 15 students. We have a handbell ensemble, and then we have chamber music ensembles. And we also have, um, every other year, an opera um, um, program or pr production that takes mm -hmm. place and that involves from anywhere from five leads to you know a cast of you know 30 40 um, mm -hmm. students yeah that's great well I don't see any questions um, I do know I will say um, that I recently had a question from a student so I'll, I'll maybe I'll fill in the gap of the question from from outside of this conversation but uh, this person was wondering, they, they really want to get into writing uh, musical scores for films, uh, film television, that kind of thing. Um, what would your advice to that student be? How would they accomplish that at the, at the university? My, my advice uh, would be to learn as much as you can about, about music and composition. What I mean by that, know the works from, you know, the Renaissance to contemporary, no Bach. Tchaikovsky, um, Rachmaninoff, Stravinsky, you know, and, and even the works of Bernard Herrmann, John Williams, and just have a really um, wide variety of the vocabulary, be able to emulate those styles and, and understand why you know, or what they're doing when they put, put a certain type of music with a scene. Um, and then and study marketing, because a lot of um, um, Film composing is just it is and getting work is just can you market yourself um, and we're kind of getting coming into more of a DIY and you know do it yourself um, market um, with the, where things are going and that the more you can you know put yourself out there um, you know the more I think chance you have to success. What kind of help or guidance would our students have in that particular regard? The kind of the self marketing uh, situation. We, we spend a lot of time just working on how you present yourself um, and what, and we bring in guests that, you know, you know we, that will, you know, we, sometimes they'll, they'll listen to a student or even look at a student's website and say, hey, you might want to try this or that, but we try to give them real world feedback on how employers or perspective, you know, employers um, are going to look at them. So they come out with the tools that are going to um, hopefully serve them and, and Get, and get them the work they want. But we believe, you know, and, and you know, again, being, giving students the tools to be versatile. So with, if you're a pianist, you know, rather than, you know, if you're gonna play for church, um, rather than just being able to play hymns, we want you to be able to improv, you know, play from a lead sheet. And the same for composers, we want you to be able to write in many different styles and have that versatility. What are some of the kind of the interesting or exciting people you bring in kind of from uh, our LA community, right? So we're, we're in, you know, kind of the film capital of the world, a lot of music production going on here. Um, what are some of the uh, industry folks that you're able to bring in? Um, well, most recently we've had, like, for example, a session vocalist contractor, Gerald White, um, who most of the prominent vocalists have studied with. So we've, we've brought him in. We've had Skypes um, with, with, uh, um, different, you know, people that are here, and also like we had, we just did a, a Skype or Zoom with, um, sorry, um, with John Mortensen, who's an expert in, um, you know, in, in keyboard improvisation. And so mm -hmm. we, it's very varied, but we we tr we do try to take advantage of these guests. And something we do in the composition program, um, we not only do the students, you know, write the music notation, but we believe in having their music, you know, hearing it live and having it recorded. And so we contract every semester a, a AFN, American Federation of Music, a union group, 
of, of the top session players in town and the students have their music recorded by these musicians and then they have a q and a after where they can get feedback from players who you know who play for john williams hans zimmer regularly and those those sessions have been just i mean invaluable wow that makes me i'm not musical but that would be pretty cool to be able to do that. is there anywhere that people could listen to any of the recordings that we do we have a repository where people might be able to go um, we have on demand for from concerts that you can go to at masters.edu slash mu slash music. If you go to that um, and then select on demand, you can see um, previous performances and some okay. of the recordings. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Well, um, seeing no additional questions, uh, Vanessa, I think I'll just go ahead and turn it back over to you. Thank you, Dr. Hopel and Professor Mason. Let me just fix my camera here. There we go. Well, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We hope this session has been helpful for you. If you have further questions, please do reach out to our admissions department. You can reach us at 661-362-2363, or you can email us at uh, admissions at masters.edu. Please keep in mind, we've got more sessions coming your way. I think over the next couple of weeks, we've got uh, our biblical counseling department featured as well as our communications department. Um, you can find these on the website where you found this one and just register there, masters.edu forward slash virtual preview. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you next time.